Okay, this time I'm going to talk about the three main reasons why cars accelerate or have the symptom or problem of accelerating and the revolutions per minute going up and down uncontrollably. Since this is one of the questions that I constantly get on the channel, and it's something important, because if we start the vehicle and we find this scenario where the revolutions per minute go up and down uncontrollably in the car, and there's also this tendency for the car to accelerate, it can be quite a confusing and unpleasant scenario, in addition to the fact that it's very difficult and not recommended to drive a car that has these types of problems or these types of symptoms. So, I'm going to talk about the three main reasons and I'm also going to talk about a fourth. The title of the video mentions three reasons, but I'm going to add a fourth additional reason that's also important to mention. So, there are going to be four main reasons why we have these types of problems in cars. So, we'll start with number one, which is problems with the valve. And this is one of the most common. If the valve already has problems, mainly when the valve stops working, it is almost certain that we are going to have this type of problem. And there are two main reasons. The first is that when the jack valve stops working, our car automatically loses the ability to regulate the idle speed. So, if we do not have the main component to regulate the idle speed, we are going to have these problems where the revolutions per minute go up and down in an uncontrolled manner and this is going to be directly caused because the device that controls the idle speed is not working. That is reason number one. Reason number two is that when the yak valve, or idle speed control valve, stops working, the yak valve passages will automatically become a vacuum leak since air will be passing or bypassing uncontrollably to the intake manifold through the yaw valve passages, and this will cause the car to accelerate uncontrollably, since we have an air intake that will be equivalent to a vacuum leak to the intake manifold and, therefore, to the cylinders, which is why we are going to have this second additional problem. So, from there we move on to number two, which is also quite common, which is vacuum leaks. We are saying that when we have an uncontrolled or unmeasured air intake to the intake manifold, we are going to have problems with both idle speed control and acceleration control. So, many times cars that have these types of problems, many times what happens is that they have vacuum leaks, since vacuum leaks are nothing more than an uncontrolled entry of air into the system. So, even if there is an idle speed control device, be it the valve or the electronic throttle body, if a lot of air is entering in an uncontrolled way, it will not be possible for the systems to control the idle speed to the specified values. Additionally, when we talk about acceleration, it will be the same, since the systems can compensate to a certain extent, but if the vacuum leak is constant or large, it is significant, it is very likely that we will have this type of problem. And generally, vacuum leaks can be caused by damaged hoses or disconnected hoses and also leaks in the gasket or the intake manifold gasket. So, from there we move on to the third, which are problems with the electronic throttle body. In systems that do not have a valve and have an electronic throttle body, when the throttle body fails, it is very likely that we will have this type of symptom where there is no control of the idle speed, the revolutions per minute go up and down, and in these types of scenarios, it is very difficult to drive the vehicles. Even the simple act of driving the vehicle just to park it a few meters away becomes quite complicated. And, in these cases, when the electronic throttle body fails, what usually happens is that the electric actuator that controls the opening of the butterfly valve or throttle plate is damaged. And as a consequence, we are going to have a double problem, since, in these types of systems, which no longer have a valve, the throttle plate or butterfly valve controls the idle speed and the vehicle's acceleration. Therefore, if the throttle body has problems in the throttle actuator, we are also going to have this type of problem. Let's go to number 3 and move on to number 4, which is the TPS sensor. If the TPS sensor fails, it is very likely that we will have this type of problem. Problems with idle speed control and acceleration. This is mainly the case in systems that do not yet have an electronic throttle body, since in systems with a mechanical throttle body, the TPS sensor is quite important since the TPS sensor will tell the computer exactly when we are pressing the accelerator pedal and when we are not pressing it, and how much we are pressing it to control acceleration. It is equally important that the sensor reports correct values when we are pressing the accelerator pedal, as well as when we are not pressing it, 
since the system knows that we are not pressing the accelerator pedal, we are not requiring acceleration and we are idling. So, if this sensor fails, if it is reporting contradictory values, or if the values change abruptly or suddenly, the system will have a lot of problems controlling acceleration or idle speed, and we will have these symptoms. Where the car accelerates, or we have these uncontrolled ups and downs in the engine revolutions per minute. And this could very well be caused by a TPS sensor that has internal damage to the variable resistor and the voltage values it delivers to the computer are contradictory and do not correspond to what we are transmitting through the accelerator pedal to the system. And, as additional advice for diagnosing this type of problem, it is very important, initially, to pay close attention to the symptoms we are experiencing, under what conditions they occur and what their trend is. If it is a trend, ah, when we accelerate the vehicle, when we are idling, when the engine is hot, when it is cold, etc. Additionally, it is also very important as a starting point to do a visual inspection of the engine. In the case of vacuum leaks, it is very important to check that the hoses are connected and in good condition. If there is a hose that is old or damaged, it must be replaced. That is the first thing, that it is well connected, for example, the air intake, all those ducts that go from the air filter to the throttle body. You have to check that too, since many cars have everything loose and then the problems become even more noticeable or more confusing. Likewise, you should always check for fault codes. If the check engine light is on or not, you should run a scanner and check for fault codes. That way, we can gather information quickly, at least to start with the diagnosis and have a starting point for where we need to go to solve the problem. So, that's all for now. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel. Give it a like if you liked it or found it useful, since that helps me a lot. And that's all. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for all your support. I invite you to continue here on the channel and see you next time.